joy and perfect peace. The earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same.
never be the same again when I leave here today. <laughs> Amen. How are we? Have a seat. Have a seat. It's nice to see your smiley faces. <coughs> is technology working? Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Oh, are we well? Hot enough? We're so British. Too hot. It's too hot. Too hot. I hate the summer. It's too hot. It's too cold. I hate the winter. It's too hot. We love autumn, don't we? Yes. Autumn and spring. Yes. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Just the hardest people to please the British. It's too hot. It's nice, actually. It's a bit. It, what's that saying? It's close. Humid. I've never understood that. <laughs> I never heard of it before. Before my wife went, it's a bit close, isn't it? I went, what? <laughs> what is it? What? I couldn't work it out. I couldn't work it out. But. Uh, it's on our side today. You uh, hopefully will have a lovely afternoon, but before you have a lovely afternoon, you're going to have a miserable morning. Is that okay? Because you're in church, and we know that when you're in church, you're supposed to be sad, beat yourself up, and miserable. Okay? Good. Good. Because if you thought that was going to happen, you're in the wrong place. There's maybe somewhere down the road for that. I don't know. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, it's great. My eyes are all over the place today. I think it's my... Hey, Fever, it is good to see your lovely faces. Uh, we've been, um, it feels like we staggered slowly into normal term time again, but uh, as soon as the kids go back to school, it is chaos again, so um, we don't know whether we're coming or going at the minute. But we're here, that's important. There's some things uh, going off this week that I need you to know about. If you are part of the church community group, or you would like to be part of the church community group for one day and one day only, or for the rest of this term. You uh, are, are you still able to join, Dorothy? Are they, if you would like to go to Tuckton Tea Gardens and Ooh. experience one of those cream teas, Ooh. then uh, I think you are more than welcome to join Dorothy, John, and team. Uh, they uh, are you meeting here? Meeting here at 10.30. Uh, if you've got a car, that would be good as well, wouldn't it, John? Yeah, if you've got a car. John's got a car. Um, don't worry. Everybody, don't panic. John's got a car. <laughs> He's got a car. Four wheels. Good, 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 good. Um, and there's a, there's a trip to Mudderford along the boat as well. Optional with your life jacket, okay? Make sure you put your life jacket on. Um, that's Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday night is limitless, is starting again, so uh, the church is going to be filled with chaos again, which is awesome. Uh, we've managed to be able to, I'm so grateful for those that have volunteered to cook for us um, on our cooking rotor. We, we like to, um, sorry, what was that? We like to feed uh, the families that come on a, uh, on, a, a w on a Wednesday night, and uh, it's actually some of the best discussions around, once they get over the fact that they've got vegetables on their plate, uh, and they've thrown them back at you, they then start talking about other things, which is lovely, and um, some of the parents are also very grateful for to, uh, a meal with us as well, so um, that starts on Wednesday. If you would like to come and get involved in any shape or form or fashion, if you can help hoover up afterwards, if you can help put some boxes back where they belong, uh, rather than on the floor. Uh, you are more than welcome to come and join us. If you're scared of children, it's okay. We all are. It's not just you. Some people come and go, I'd like to get involved. They stand in the middle of the hall when the chaos goes, I'm not supposed to be here. Um, you can get over that if you give it time. Don't worry. You were a child once. <laughs> John, you were. Yeah. I know. I, could you imagine little John with his beard and glasses and <laughs> as a little child? He always had a beard, <laughs> did our little John. Um, <laughs> so that, that's, that's Wednesday, uh, which is a busy day, actually. And also, the hub is open at 10 till 2 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Prayer space is tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Today, uh, at... Um, Tonight, I forgot what time I've said, so I'm going to say 7 o'clock. 
we start our communication workshop. So if you put your name down on our, one of our registration forms, um, it would be great to see you because you put your name down. So I did say 7 o'clock, I knew that. So uh, we start um, tonight, it's once every two weeks for a number of weeks as we begin to kind of develop a new group of budding preachers, speakers, communicators. It's, remember, it's not just about being here on a Sunday morning uh, preaching God's words. It's also in your daily life. Uh, you may be expected to speak in public in some shape, form or fashion. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's always a great time. And uh, that starts tonight. So if you put your name down, please be there or you're getting a red tick next to your name. Uh, Tuesday night is also uh, our s the start of our um, five-week prayer course called Be Still, which is all about building, starting, uh, maybe realigning a time of devotion for yourselves on a daytime. Put your hand up. This isn't, don't worry, no one's going to judge you. Put your hands up if you have a, what we in the Christian tradition would call a quiet time each day. Put your hands up if you get around God's word during the day at some point. Mohan, put your hands up if you open a Bible daily. Okay, put your hands up if you pray daily. Put your hands up if you rant daily. If you rant. 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 Oh, rant. Really put your hands up if you journal daily. Oh, no, I don't do that. If you journal. Gerbil, put your hands up if you gerbil daily. Um, okay, so Tuesday night is a good place to start. We look at some of the kind of biblical principles of it, and then we look at the practical stuff of it as well. So you might learn something new, uh, mm. you might learn something old, uh, but I think it would be very good for all of us together as disciples of Jesus to begin to fashion our day yeah. with a time of devotion before we do anything else. Um, I think it's really important if I'm honest, but I get paid to say that because I'm your pastor. Uh, but I do believe it and I do do it as well. So my kids are kicked out of the kitchen when I'm sitting at the kitchen table. I tell them to go away because I'm being quiet with Jesus. And they go away, which is nice. It works. Speaking of kids, where are they? Are they? Thank you, Matthew. I knew they were here somewhere. Uh, so that is Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. It's only for five weeks. Um, so it'll be good. It'll be in the back room. It'll be a really good, engaging time for all of us. Please come along. That is, our week is up and running now. And um, yeah, looking forward to Roger coming to preach today. He is covering two chapters because he's greedy. He's... He's, he's covering chapters 25 and 26 <coughs> of the book of Acts, which means we only have two weeks left after this week in the book of Acts, um, which uh, we, we got there, guys. We got there. We're nearly there. We'll have a, we'll have a cake for, to celebrate the last. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, should we stand? Should we stand? Should we stand? Good news, everybody. Matthew has got somewhere new to live. Yay! When do you move in, Matthew? When do you move in? The 30th of September. Awesome. Awesome. And you're all welcome for coffee and cake around Matthew. Yeah? Good. 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 It's nice to be together. Sometimes we get thrown out and uh, we fight and we uh, struggle and we wade. Anybody waded through it this week? Anybody been fighting it this week? Everybody been coasting it this week going, I don't know what I'm doing, but God does. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, and sometimes we, get, we feel like we're on our own doing it, don't we? And so that's why it's important that Sunday mornings we connect again with our brothers and sisters. And we connect with each other. We connect with him. And that's why we gather as church family to be with Jesus, to know Jesus, to learn from Jesus. And so we welcome Jesus. We welcome you, Father. We welcome you. We open up our hearts. We open up our lives. We open up this place, this space for you, Jesus. 
And we bless you, Lord, and we ask that you would just come and invade this room, Lord, because I'm hungry. Anybody else? I'm hungry. My spirit needs refreshing. Lord, we need a touch from you, the living God. We ask, Lord, that you would come and that you would meet with us, Lord. Your church this morning, your children this morning, Lord. That you would speak into our lives, Lord. That our souls would be lifted up by your presence, by your word, by your love, by your truth. Lord, we worship you because of who you are. And we ask, Lord, that in this time of song worship, Lord, that you would sing songs of love over us too, Lord. That we would know that we're in your presence. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hosanna in the high end. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high end. I see a gem. Selfless faith, selfless faith. I see a near revival stirring as we prance. We're on our knees, we're on our knees. Hosanna. Break my heart for what breaks yours. 
Christ is my reward, all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul. to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, I have decided. before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided.
turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. 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 Sweet the sound that saved a wreck like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace that told. chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, here's my secret, unending love, amazing grace. Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, here's my secret. And then Jesus, we sing and proclaim that truth. We'll be forever mine. Lord, we are forever yours. 
And Lord, you, we will be forever. Thank you, Father, that you pursued us. That you showed your grace and mercy to us. That you showered your love and favor on us. And Lord, we responded in our hearts to the truth of who you were and who you are and who you continue to be will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Amen. We are just going to continue in a place of worship and prayer and um, provide a space for anybody come and come to lead us in prayer, come and speak to us and maybe God's been prompting you this week, maybe um, something's happened that you want to share about, we've got some good news, you want to give, come and give some thanks, uh, feel free to come forward. Just uh, a quick um, mention of uh, Mark, uh, Mark Ely, who uh, joins us, he's in the wheelchair, so if you don't know him, Mark has in hospital at the minute, he's having his legs drained of fluid, uh, which it's a result of the tablets that he's on because of his health. And so it's quite, it's cyclical. So he comes out for a while, he continues on his medication, fluid builds up in his legs, and then uh, he's back in hospital. He's, uh, he's on Ward 23 uh, in Bay 1, and he is more than happy for anybody to go and meet with him. He, wa he was in a side room enjoying TV on his own and he was living the dream. Uh, but has he moved to a big bay now, Rog? Yeah? Yeah, they, they have moved him a number of times actually, but he likes people being around him some of the time. So if you are available, you can visit him between the hours of two. It starts at two o'clock, doesn't it? Um, and uh, he's more than happy for you to come and see him. Let's just pray for him. Father, we, we thank you for Mark. We thank you, Lord, for who he is. We thank you, Lord, for his faith. And Lord, we pray, Lord, as, in his, as, in, as he's in hospital and, uh, Lord, for a period of time until uh, his body gets back to where it should be, Lord. We, we pray, Lord, that he would know your presence, your grace and your favour, Lord. Lord, that he would know your healing touch in his body. And, Lord, this fluid would go. And, and Lord, we pray, Lord, for a, maybe a new alternative in medication that would stop this kind of cycle happening, Lord. And, and, Lord, you would restore him to full health, Lord. We see him stand at the back of church sometimes. We hear him singing, Lord. We, we see, Lord, what you're doing in his life, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that that would continue in a powerful way, Lord, that this man would stand in front of us and sing those words, Lord, amazing grace, Lord. And we know that, you're, Lord, you're a God who answers prayer. You're a God who seeks, uh, Lord, our prayers. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we would see this happen in Mark's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else want to come and lead us? Come on, Patsy. I just want to say, um, is, it, can you, is it working? Yeah, I just want to say um, another thank you because I don't know, I've had an amazing week really. And yesterday I went, walked into Winton uh, without my crutch. Um, and again, here, in fact, it's easier. Yeah. <laughs> the crutch was making my shoulder really ache. And I, I just thought, you know, that's, they, they changed the um, height of it, but it didn't seem to make any difference. So I thought, let's go without it. And I don't know, it's just been amazing. Um, also, I've got my um, pain control under the leaf properly as I went to the doctor and I got a prescription for some cocodamol, a stronger version of the ones you get over the counter. And I'm just taking one every four hours. Um, at the moment, I'm still waking up in the night and needing to take it. But um, another good thing, I got a phone call from the hospital asking me how I was. And uh, so... Um, while we were chatting, I said, oh, I was told that I'm going to have pain for one year. And she said, no, no. She said, after eight weeks, everything changes. And, um, you know, it goes down. And um, 
I just believe that God is, isn't going to, I'm not going to have pain for one year. And I had prayer that day when I spoke about it, was it a couple of weeks ago, and came in that, no, I wasn't going to have pain for one year. And I believe it's, it's going already, and I'm just so grateful. And um, with my exercises, I was climbing up steps properly, because that's the thing, to a big thing was my leg wouldn't bend so I'm working on that more and more and um, yeah I'm just so grateful really am so thank you everyone for your prayers here comes a hot stepper you know you reminded me when you said about the kitchen I've been reading the biography of John Wesley and he was one of 19 children would you believe it was some of them didn't survive but nevertheless, his mother was very busy, and in order to get her a quiet time, she'd sit in the kitchen with a pinny over her head. <laughs> so that's how she got her quiet time, even with all those children. But I have a word for you. Um, but um, there it is Isaiah 43, 19. The Lord gave me this this week. Behold, I will, be, I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth, shall you not know it? I will turn ev even, I, I will even make a way in the, can't read my own writing. <laughs> I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And I hate that because I've had some encouragement this week. Now, um, next week I do, thanks for the word for the days, by the way. Next week I'm on hospital duty. And the last time I was in, and although I'd done it before COVID, 20 odd years, um, this time, and the chaplains were so pleased to see me because they'd not had anyone to preach to, you see, or to do a service for, and the nurses are too busy. So anyway, managed to get five in last time, and uh, one was with family, obviously, but the chap, he looked a bit, he was in a side room, and I knocked the door and said about the chapel service, and he looked a bit aggressive, actually, but he said, oh, yeah, um, my family's coming in. And I said, oh, okay, fine, you've got to enjoy your family coming in. So left it at that. They were at the desk when I went out. Anyway, they wheeled him in, uh, the family did, and he had a great big tattoo down his arm of a cross. And uh, anyway, he said, I've only had to stay for 10 minutes because he was so poorly and uncomfortable sitting so he did come for 10 or 15 minutes and then uh, I, I encouraged the chaplain to pray for him <laughs> and anyway he uh, eventually the family went he said thank you you've made my day oh, and I said you've made my day I never had encouragement like that before and then as you know I've been going down you know Prince William was in Bournemouth on Thursday oh I thought, oh we missed it I'd have gone away with my flag but anyway, uh, I go down with my son and a few others who uh, give out. I'm great one for tracks. And you, who remembers the fella who was in Australia? Uh, and he was for years, I seem to have 30 years in my head. For years, he was giving, he was standing in a door, a doorway. And he'd step out and he'd say to people, do you know where you're going when you die? And gave him a tract. And he didn't have any encouragement or response for year upon year and then suddenly people were popping up all over the world including Lansdowne Baptist would you believe saying this fella stepped out of a doorway and said do you know where you're going when you die and it made up with a tract and all those so I'm a great believer so anyway yes no Friday um, I was down there with my son and uh, uh, and some just don't, don't want to know, obviously. But you can get into conversation. And I had the, you know, when turning was on, we went out with the turning group from the life centre. And uh, um, I had that with me. And this fellow was sat on the wall waiting for his friend. And, uh, and I said, and he was on his phone. And I said, well, I don't want to interrupt your phone. And blah, de blah. And can I give you something to read? And, uh, and he said, yeah. And... Uh, he said, oh, it's all right, I'm all right, I'm, I'm just waiting for my friend, he's contacting me. So anyway, uh, I said, uh, I gave him a tract, and he said, oh, he said, I've been searching, I've been wondering, I've been searching. He was only, te you know, late teens, I suppose, early 20s, and uh, so I had the turning card with me, 
And uh, I asked him the questions on there. And uh, you, do you know where you're going when you die? And it's, you read from Romans, obviously, you all have sinned. And he said, I know, I know. And he was so open to the God. I asked the Lord to send me to the harvest, and he did. And th there were two or three, you know, conversations. But anyway, he was reading the card before I got a chance to say it. So he was reading it. And the change on his face was beautiful. Then his friend came, and we were just going to, and then we got interrupted, and they had to rush off to a meeting. So I felt very encouraged. And, and I know uh, this is not good to, well, it is good to announce Tuesday week at Moordown Baptist, we're all concerned about the way of the world, aren't we? And the way of this country's going. And um, Christian Institute, they support Christians who are accused of different things. And uh, even when you're accused, you know, sent to court for praying, it's bad news, isn't it? So it's 7.30 till 8.45, Moordown Baptist, 19th. Having said about, I haven't got any leaflets to give you. But you can, if you're here, pray for them please. Yeah, anyway, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> on a front line. Rog, do you want to use this one or that one? All right, you've got this one. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to say what Dorothy's doing in hospital is amazing because uh, I see a lot of loneliness when I, wait, I, I go in. There's this gentleman I go and visit and also now Mark, and I've just been to see Mark. And by the way, he says, if you turn up, don't bother unless you bring strawberry, um, what was it, a strawberry yeah, red grape, uh, seedless red grapes and a uh, scorby milkshake. No, he's joking, but he said if you do that, it's a, it's a bonus. So thank you. Um, but um, almost diagonally opposite where he was, there was this guy and he was faffing with his TV and he was really struggling. And I just saw a need and went and helped him. And it only took half a second. It really did. And I just realized how many people are just like, the nurses are so stretched in what they're doing that even a little thing... For, for people in their beds is not being is not being met. And that made that guy, he was smiling, beaming, because I'd just helped him out, and all I did was twiddle a knob on TV. Um, this week, I had a bit of um, a, a blessing, I'd, I, I have to say. I worked in a job um, out the other side of Portsmouth, um, and I had to be actually on stage at 9 o'clock in the morning. So I left very, very early, like 5 o'clock in the morning, so that I knew I wasn't going to get caught in traffic, because I can't make the excuse that I'm going to be late if I'm on the front stage. And uh, anyway, so I actually got into the area by 7 o'clock, and I was walking on a stony beach by the sea, really literally, because the sound has loads of estuaries. And I, and I was just walking along, just praying to God and e eating a pate sandwich from leftover pate for my breakfast. And um, it was better than nothing, because I didn't want it to go to waste. So, so pa pate sandwich, right, it won the day. And I was going along, and, and then and I prayed to God, and I said, God, can you help me find some sea glass? Because I always love to collect a bit of sea glass when I go near, near the beach, because I think that's litter picking, and it's great, and you can put it in a big tub, and it looks nice, and it's got a bit of a story of your life each time you've been to the sea. And this was a beautifully clean beach, but it's full of stones, so you can't actually see anything apart from tiny little bits of sand. So I, I felt God saying, walk along a bit, walk along, stop. And then he said, turn around and, and, and put your hand down to your left. And I did, and there's a bit of sea glass right there. Bright green sea glass. Beautiful. <laughs> and I just think he's in detail. He was helping me because that was a massive beach, and I only had half an hour before I went off to the hall. So I just wanted to give you that. Anyway, have a good morning. Pate. It's pronounced Pate. Talking of a nice breakfast, um, my, my son had, what was it, lychee? I can't remember, it was years ago. It was really, really interesting, never mind. Um, that antidote felt flat, didn't it? Um, I've been having this song going through my head all, all morning, and it's, it's not a Christian song at all. And What? <laughs> okay, so somebody will tell me who wrote this. It's really famous. Um, you can't always get what you want. If you try some time, you might get what you need or something like that. Who wrote that? Right, well, there you go. I heard it and I thought, oh, my goodness. Thank goodness the Lord is not like that, <laughs> is what I was thinking. And uh, uh, he, he doesn't give like that. And I think every single moment when we approach him, it's by his love first. And it's by his grace first. And it's overwhelming generosity to us. We don't just get what we need. We get what he wants to give us, which is way more than what we need. 
and it's it's oh, it just filled the relief when I think you know that's how Rolling Stones think about it. This is how Jesus Christ thinks about it. You are precious to him, and, he, and he's incredibly generous to you all the time. And that's so different. I felt the relief. So, by contrast. Thank you, Alan. Uh, any, anybody else? Uh, we're going we're gonna to get back into some worship. But uh, I just want to ask uh, the church, our church family, for your prayers. Um, we have been on a bit of a journey, not me, Hannah has been on a bit of a journey, she's hiding out of the way now. If you see her with a camera, she's just taking photos for the website and some other bits, so please smile, look happy, it's you're in church, be joyful. Um, but we, we've, uh, Hannah's been on a bit of a journey uh, with uh, thyroid stuff and um, some other things uh, and ended up uh, going private for a scan uh, on her neck, we kind of found a lump and um, thankfully uh, thankfully they did find something and uh, after a biopsy and um, they got back to us and uh, Hannah's going to need it being taken out they're pretty sure uh, that it's cancerous uh, they'll find more uh, once it's taken out but once it's out it's out it's it, it's curative uh, all being well right now so Hannah goes in for surgery on Monday not tomorrow a week on Monday uh, at seven o'clock in the morning. So, uh, and we're away at a wedding uh, next week. Uh, so we'll be coming back on the Sunday night. So this is why I'm asking for your prayers now. I didn't want to put it out on the prayer chain, uh, but just want to kind of ask you for your prayers this week. Uh, and that once it's out, it's out. And uh, that'll be the end of it. Good riddance. Um, and Hannah's got two weeks off work uh, from, from, mo from the day that she comes out. So she won't be back in school for two weeks. So she'll be at home resting. Uh, and uh, her mum's coming down to look after her, and, and me too, um, but she needs to stay in bed, so you can pray for that she stays in bed too, and she's not running around. So I would please uh, ask for your prayers over this next few weeks for us as a family. Um, our children do know to, a, to, to an extent, to the level that they're able to understand, so they're more aware, they're fully aware that Hannah's going in for an operation. They don't know the ins and outs of it and all, but um, thankfully we uh, we we found something and um, it will be done. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Uh, we're going to take up our offering in the, our next uh, time of worship. Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your care. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And Lord, at all times, in all needs, in all situations, Lord, we can come to you. We can look to you and we pray, Lord, for your provision in our lives. We pray for Hannah. That, Lord, this week at school, in the busyness and the distraction of new kids in, in school, Lord, that, Lord, she would have the energy to continue. And, Lord, in the run-up to Monday, Lord, she would just feel your presence. She would know your presence, Lord. And, Lord, all will go well in the surgery, Lord, and it will be what it will be. And, uh, Lord, it will be out and good riddance to it, Lord. And that, Lord, it won't spread, it won't have any other effect on her, Lord. And, Lord, that there we pray for recovery, we pray for, Lord, a refreshing. And, and Lord, for the thyroid problems as well, Lord, that we would get to the bottom of that. And, and Lord, all will be well in, in you, Lord. For your glory, Lord, we pray this. In Jesus' name, amen.
That's cool.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The one, the only. You are our living hope, Lord. Our hope isn't in this world, Lord. Our hope and trust and life is in you, Lord Jesus. You conquered the grave. You came back for us, Lord. And we stand on the solid rock of your truth this morning. You are our living hope, Lord. We will look nowhere else but to you. Whatever comes our way, Lord, we look to you. Lord, we will not be defeated. We look to you. You wear the victor's crown, Lord. You are our living hope. You conquered this life and the next, King Jesus. And we trust you. And we proclaim your name. And all God's people said, Amen. Boom, Jesus, boom. <laughs> Thank you, worship team. Well done, guys. Why don't you say a quick hello to someone around you before Roger comes up and preaches? Uh, I believe. Boom, Jesus, boom. So testing, testing, sounds like it's working. Wonderful, wonderful. It is sweaty in here, isn't it? Do uh, grab a seat. Grab your seat. That's the ESV. Much right? Nice, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. Good. So, uh, after today, what is the 10th today? Yeah. Just try to do, work my head out. So, uh, Roger's here. Why don't we say hello to this stunning young man? Hello, everyone. We are coming to the end of the book of Acts. You'll be happy to know. Rogers today, Rachel is next week. Rach, yes? Yay, Rach. Go, Rach. And then the final one is on the 24th before we uh, jump into some other stuff, which is great. Who's doing what one? Me. Okay. Is that right? <laughs> he didn't look happy about that. <laughs> 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 Who do you want to do it? 
Oh, you on the box, Jimmy, can't. Right. Um, and it's been a bit of a journey, hasn't it, through the Book of Acts? Yeah, and yeah. I have loved it. What, what it's enabled us is to get so many people on board through our communication workshop and then just journey, which feels like a bit of a year, doesn't yeah. it? And um, Roger has worked so diligently every time he's come up to preach. He's always keen for feedback. He's always bouncing ideas from me. He's always kind of wanting to learn more and more. And to be fair, I mean, you, you ask this man to speak about nettles and he'll tell you, he'll speak to you for three hours about the nettle family, I'm sure. Anything green related, he was free and easy. But actually he found when it came to speaking God's word, he felt a bit more kind of um, stuck, rigid, yeah, yeah. all those kind of things. So this has been a real learning curve for Roger and every time he's got up to preach he's done so well at the things that he's took on board and and grown so you've you've grown massively not that you yeah. <laughs> don't worry <laughs> don't worry uh and I I know that we're going to be in for a bit of a treat so why don't we just pray for Roger again and then we'll get going father we thank you for this man we thank you lord for his heart Lord, I thank you for the incredible relationship that he's got with you. Lord, it inspires me. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I think if I can get closer to Roger, I can get closer to you sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we, we want some of that for ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for who this man is and what he stands for. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you've developed him, Lord, and for the gift in, in him. And we know, Lord, that he works so hard in all that you ask of him to do, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, that you would bless him this week, uh, Lord, as he gives out today. Lord, that this week coming would be a powerful week for him. But before that, Lord, we know that he's got work to do for you. And so we pray, speak to us, Lord, because your servants are listening. May your word come to life in our lives, Lord, this week. And Lord, when we leave here, may we be the better for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, mate. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. So, um, where Liam left off last week at the end of 24, basically Felix um, retired from his job. Well, he almost got um, sanctioned because he was a pretty corrupt bloke. And uh, then this chap, Festus, took over. And so now, at this point, I'm now starting to talk about Festus, who's taken his role quite seriously. As soon as he's moved to Caesarea, He's then gone straight up to Jerusalem and he stayed there a handful of days and all the Jews have got around him and said to him, basically, crucify Paul. We want Paul back up here and we want to really get hold of him, basically, is what they've said in a nutshell. But I'm going to do it by the book. Um, and uh, hopefully it will all become a bit more apparent. And that's just a, a loose part to, to begin with of this. So here we go at the beginning of Acts 25. Now, three days after Festus had arrived in, in the province, he went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea, and the chief priests and the principal men of the Jews laid out a case against Paul. And they urged him, asking him a favour against Paul, that he summons Paul to Jerusalem. Because he wanted to kill them, they wanted to kill him on the way, basically. Festus replied, Paul is being kept in Caesarea, and he himself intended to go there shortly. So he said, let the men of authority among you come down with me and if there is anything wrong about the man meaning Paul let them bring charges against him after he stayed uh, among them not more than eight or ten days he went back to Caesarea and the very next day he um, took his seat on the tribunal and ordered Paul to be brought in when he had arrived the Jews who had come from Jerusalem stood around him bringing many and serious charges against him but they couldn't prove any of them. Paul argued in his defense, neither against the law of the Jews or against the temple or against Caesar have I committed any offense. But Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul outright, do you wish to come to Jerusalem and there be tried on these charges before me? But Paul said, I'm standing, in a, in, um, I'm standing before Caesar, a Caesar tribunal where I ought to be tried. To the Jews, I have done no wrong, as you very well know. If then I'm a wrongdoer and I've committed anything for which I deserve to die, I do not seek to esca escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus 
when he conferred to his council, answered to Caesar, you have appealed to Caesar, so Caesar you shall go. Paul had been taken to Caesarea out of harm's way. Um, This was when Felix um, uh, was in charge, and basically he was then put um, uh, in jail for two years. So I'm just going to read this next bit. Paul had been taken to Caesarea out of harm's way, and the chief priests and the principal of the Jews tried to get Festus to bring Paul back to Jerusalem as they had plotted to kill him on the way. People with authority to come back from Jerusalem to Caesarea with him to bring charges against Paul in Caesarea away from Jerusalem. Those in authority authority who went down to Caesarea in a formal tribunal setting made many accusations against Paul, but none of them stuck, and they couldn't prove any of them. Festus asked Paul outright as to whether he would go back to Jerusalem and be tried. Paul already knew that he would not get a fair trial. So he did not want to go back. Paul was not afraid to die, but he couldn't see the point of dying just for the sake of it. So he was in a Roman court. Already he had appealed to Caesar, so Festus agreed to send him to Rome. So back to the passage again. Um, Paul now goes before um, Agrippa and Bernice, and Agrippa is the king. Okay, so when some days had passed, Agrippa, the king, and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. And as they stayed many stayed there many days, Festus had time to lay out Paul's case before the king, saying, there is a man left over in prison by Felix, and when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid out the case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. I answered that it was not custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had an opportunity to make his defence concerning the charges laid against him. So when they came together here, I made no delay. I put on the very next day at the tribunal and ordered the men to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charges of such evils as I would suppose. Rather, they had had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion about a certain Jesus who was dead, but Paul who asserted was alive. Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there again. And, but Paul um, again appealed to, to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor. I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, would you like to hear the man myself? And he said, yes, and uh, you will hear him tomorrow. King Agrippa was interested to hear Paul for himself once Festus had talked about him, uh, to, uh, uh, talked to him about Paul. Paul got his moment and seized it to tell King Agrippa about Jesus. So back to the passage again. So this is starting at verse 23. So on the next day, um, King Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and they entered the audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then, at the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, Agrippa, um, said, King Agrippa, and all who, of you who are present, you see this man before me. That, um, the whole Jewish people have petitioned me, based in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought no longer to live. But I find that he has done nothing deserving death. And he himself appealed to to the emperor. I decided to go and send him, but I have nothing definite to write to my lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before you, and especially you, King Agrippa, so that we have examined him. After we've examined him, I might have something to write, for it seems to me unreasonable in sending a prisoner not to indicate the charges against him. So this is the next bit that God gave me a bit of a download. After some time, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea, and as they were staying a while, Festus had time to talk to Paul, Paul's case to King Agrippa. Paul had been in prison there, still in prison since Felix left, and for that two years. Festus said to King Agrippa that Paul was accused of many serious accusations, but not 
the chief priest, uh, sorry, by the chief priests and the elders of, and the Jews in Jerusalem, and that he had explained to them that in Roman customs, the accused, in this case, Paul, was to meet his accusers face to face and to hear the charges um, and then defend himself. Festus went on to explain what happened in court, that Jews accused Paul of a dispute of, with their own religion, not what Festus was expecting. Then they went on to a certain Jesus being dead. Paul asserted him to, a to, to be alive. Jesus had risen from the dead, but the accusers, the chief priests, and the elders of Israel had concocted a cover-up bribe with soldiers back in the book of Matthew. After Jesus' resurrection and the empty tomb, in chapter 28, verse 11, it says, While we were going, behold, some of the guards went into the city and told the chief priests and all, what it, all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people, his disciples came in the night and stole him, meaning Jesus, away from uh, away while we were asleep. And if it comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money, i.e. a bribe, and did as they were di directed. And this story has gone around the Jews ever since. Bribery and lies led to the removal of truth for many people. The truth of Je that Jesus is alive and he appeared to hundreds of people after his resurrection up from the dead and before his ascension when he was carried up to heaven. So we're now going back to the passage and this is now starting chapter 26. And it starts with um, Paul's defense uh, before Agrippa. So Agrippa actually invites Paul to uh, come and give a defense. So he says, so Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I consider myself fortunate that I, that is before you, King Agrippa, I am going to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, especially because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. My manner of life from a youth spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem is known by all the Jews. They have known me for a long time, if they're willing to testify. According to the strictest party of the religion, I have lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial because of my hope is in the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our 12 tribes um, hope to attain. And they earnestly worship night and day. And for this hope, I am accused by, by, Jew, by the Jews, O king. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the Jews. This is Paul speaking now. I, I, carrying on speaking. I, was, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and I did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison after receiving authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in all the synagogues, and I tried to make them blaspheme, and in a raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. And then uh, I'll just carry on a little bit more, and then I'll go again into a bit of a download that I've been given. So Paul tells of his conversion. In this connection, I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, the sun the, that shone around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me, in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, don't forget Paul was originally Saul. Um, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appealed, uh, sorry, I have appeared to you for this purpose, to anoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen and to the and to those in which I will appear to you, delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you 
to open their eyes so that they may move from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God and they may receive forgiveness of sins and place and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So end of the passage for a minute. I'm just going to go on to uh, 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 unpack that a little bit, a little bit if I may. Paul was well educated and knew the Jewish law and custom very well. He had been chosen by Jesus personally to take Jesus' name to the Jews and the Gentiles, starting with his commission right on the Damascus Road. In 26.14, Jesus says Paul to Paul that it is hard to kick against the goad. So I did some cross-referencing, and it basically was saying, unless you, you're fighting against my will, meaning Jesus' will. When we are not in line with God our li- for our lives, we are less effective for him and less fulfilled in our own lives. We all need to dig deep in the good and the bad times to continually pray to God to show us the route that he wants for all of us. Most of us here today are here because Jesus has changed us in some way. Some in a gradual way and some in a more powerful moment, often referred to as the Damascus Road. Whether gradually or instantly, the outcome is the same. God changes us all bit by bit for us to be more like Jesus with the fruits of the Spirit and we are all uniquely to be used to further his kingdom. Jesus wants us to be in a relationship with him, talking and listening with him through prayer and his word, which is obviously the Bible. We should be doing it as often as we can. That way, gaining in wisdom that the, um, then leads to discernment about who, who and how to mention Jesus in communication, allowing the Holy Spirit to work and therefore be more effective in conversation. We are all called to be seed sowers and waterers of God's word, telling others about Jesus and what he has done for us. Amen. Back to the um, passage in verse 19, it says, Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have I've had, I have had the help from God, and so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing that the prophets and Moses um, would say would come to pass. That Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. And he's, as he was saying these things, in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you're out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said very quickly back, most excellent Festus, I'm, not, I'm speaking true and rational words, for the king knows about these things, to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these has, been, um, has escaped his notice, for it has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe in the prophets? I know that you believe. And, and Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am. And then with a bit of humor, he says, except for these gates. Paul, again, made his position known by describing how he had brought, how he'd been brought up and how zealous he was as a Pharisee to the point of persecuting and killing the very people he was now representing, the Christian. He outlined his Damascus Road moment in order for King Agrippa to grasp the size of his transformation. Jesus had made for him. Jesus, uh, we should all be ready to tell others of our pre-Jesus life and then suddenly, or gradually, um, what our lives have been like since giving our lives to Jesus. Our testimonies are very powerful as they are unique and no one can adjust or take them away from you. We should all practice our testimonies regularly and update them as God changes our lives gradually to be more like Jesus. In verse 20, Paul continues to tell King Agrippa to repent and turn to God. Repentance is something that is almost impossible to do on our own. The daily walk with Jesus is the difference between success and failure. 
In other words, continually looking to God to all that we do, making the repentance process achievable and in this in turn becomes noticeable to others in our transformation from sinful to better. We are all a work in progress. In verse 22 and 23, Paul was targeted by the Jews for pointing out the scriptures that Moses and the prophets had already spoken about long ago regarding Jesus, his death and his resurrection. As soon as, people, as soon as Paul mentioned Jesus rising from the dead, Festus interjected and asked Paul if, there, if he was out of his mind. Paul explained that he was speaking true and rational words and he carried on boldly as King, as king Agrippa was there. There will always be scoffers and folk not believing in all you have to say regarding Jesus. And it is wise to pray for divine help in all encounters to, as God changes the hearts and minds of people to be more receptive to the good news. To the good news of Jesus. Paul was bold to ask King Agrippa outright if he believed in the prophets and King Agrippa asked Paul if he was trying to persuade him to be a Christian in such a short amount of time. And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God, not only um, you, but also all the people here, um, to come and walk as I am with Jesus. It is the heart of every Christian to want others to also give their lives to Jesus. And we are all encouraged to pray for our enemies as much as our friends, as God has a purpose, a good purpose for everyone. When anyone is doing the will of God, it will be good, and he is a God of peace and love. So the last bit of the passage continues. Um, then the king arose, and the governor and Bernice, and those were sitting, around, uh, sitting with him. And when they'd withdrawn, they said to one another, this man is doing nothing wrong to deserve death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. I know you're missing the clipboard, aren't you? Thank you. Um, the passage continued then. King Agrippa and his entourage got up and left. What we don't know is if any of them gave their lives to Jesus later. We can all be encouraged just to do our bit as Paul had done for King Agrippa and all who were with him. I'd like to pray. Father God, please help us hold. Sorry. Father God, please help us to be bold and joyful as we seek opportunities and ask for divine appointments alongside your wisdom on how we should proceed in telling others of your steadfast love and goodness to all of us and give us the right words and actions to show the love of Jesus to others in the hope that they will all come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. Thank you for being so faithful, loving and generous. And we know it is your desire to further your kingdom and for all of us to be part of that, using our amazing gifts that you've given us and you've bestowed upon us uniquely. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Oh, man. I well would done, like Roger. to say just boom, Jesus, boom. Yes, finish. come on. Okay. Come on. Not um, an easy passage, mate. Lots of scripture. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Okay. We, uh, there's so That's much right. in there, isn't there? I pray, but I'm, yeah. Um, if you would like to start a preaching journey... Come along tonight. Don't worry if your name's not down already. You can come and join us tonight and uh, have a go. Get stuck in. Uh, it's uh, a great opportunity. And you will too be given the opportunity to stand here and preach. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock tonight. Good. Shall we stand? I'm just going to pray. And uh, tea and coffee are in the uh, back room. Remember, uh, Hannah is going around with a camera. So smile, and uh, even if you're talking to someone that you don't like, smile. <laughs>
and we're just gonna we're just gonna add some uh, photos uh, over the next few weeks and months. You'll see them popping up in different places and stuff. But we we want people to see who we are and not just um, we want people to uh, admire John's beard. <laughs> say, wow, I I could get a beard if I go to church, <laughs> and Colin's beard, <laughs> Dorothy's. <laughs> who are you pointing to, John and Rob's? Rob's going back to work tomorrow. That beard's gone. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could grow a beard. Anyway, Father, we thank you for your goodness today. We thank you for community. We thank you for, Lord, life and, Lord, your blessing, Lord, for knowing you. And, Lord, the opportunities that you give us to speak, Lord, as Paul stood in front of Agrippa, Lord, may we get opportunities this week, Lord, wherever we are, just to speak so naturally and freely about who you are to us. People cannot argue with who you are to us. Uh, Lord, what they do with that is up to them. But we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be with us on our front lines, in our workplaces, uh, wherever we find ourselves this week, Lord, that you would give us the boldness and the courage to speak on your behalf, to be your hands and feet. Help us to be kind. Help us to love those around us, Lord, and demonstrate the light and life of who Jesus is, in Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, preaching workshop tonight, 7 o'clock, prayer space, 7 o'clock, uh, no, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, and uh, be still prayer course, 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. Have a great day, enjoy the close weather, may you be bitten, in Jesus' name, amen.